Hi! Welcome to episode 91 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. I'm Laura, also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the corner of knitandtea.com, and that is where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Stash Buckler Adventures in Yarn, where I sell my hand spun yarns. And we have a group on Ravelry called The Corner of Knit and Tea. Hello! It is Friday, June 3rd, so it has only been a couple days since I have spoken to you, although by the time you are seeing this, it should be Sunday, June 5th. I am recording a little bit early because I think this is the last time um, I will be in natural daylight for the rest of the weekend when I am home with my recording equipment. We are taking a quick overnight trip out to uh, fly in a drone race and do some other flying and see a few sites in uh, western Kansas. And so I decided to record on Friday late afternoon, early evening. It's about 5.30. Um, and so I don't have a ton of progress to show you because if you remember, I just spoke to you on Monday, which was a holiday. But I did get a lot done on Monday and have gotten a bunch done this week. So I do have a few things to show you. And I didn't want to go without a podcast this weekend. So I thought I would just record a short one. It has been a pleasant week here. As I said, um, we in the U.S. had a holiday on Monday, so it was a short work week. And then actually I took off a half day today so I could come home and do some laundry. And um, I ended up just doing a lot of crafting. I have a few more chores. Um, mostly I'm doing laundry so that we can uh, pack some things and go away. And also so that when we get home um, on Sunday, I don't have all of my chores to do then. Um, so we did kind of plan ahead a little bit. Um, my husband took the entire day off. He has been running and flying and um, just generally having a good day. Um, we went out for a very early dinner about 4.30. And um, no, we're not old <laughs> um, because he was meeting some friends for some flying after work and a friend is going to help him tune his aircraft a little bit, which hopefully will bode well for the race on Sunday morning. So that is the story here. I don't have too much else to tell you. Um, I, like I said, it has been a short week with lots of crafting, so that's an A plus in my book. Tonight I went ahead and um, pulled out a sample of tea that I have gotten from the Republic of Tea. This was in their catalog not that long ago. It is a watermelon mint iced black tea and so what I did was I prepared it hot and then I poured it over ice in my um, uh, Tervis mug with my Minions, um, added a bit of sugar, and um, I can definitely smell both the watermelon and the mint. I'll be interested to see what this tastes like. It tastes like watermelon. It totally tastes like watermelon. It's definitely got that, um, I don't even know how to explain it, but it tastes like I'm eating watermelon. Which I don't know for sure that I like in tea. I, I don't know that I want to drink watermelon. Um, so I'm undecided on this one, but it might um, make your fancy. I don't have a list of ingredients. I'm going to assume watermelon, mint, and black tea. Um, you could probably find out by going to the Republic of Tea website. Um, and I will add a link to this tea in the show notes so you can see the list of ingredients and potentially order some if you want to try. This is going to require a little more thinking. I, I'm not sure about this one. And you know me, I actually do like fruity teas, but that's that's a little weird. <laughs> so that's, that's my scientific opinion. It's a little weird. So let's talk about what I've been knitting this week. I showed you some projects that I wanted to cast on last week and talked about what I wanted to do. And um, I have progressed on two of the three, which I think is not bad considering it's only been four days. Um, the biggest hurrah, and I'm, I will definitely finish this this weekend, is the Hilda, which I haven't shown you for a while. This is a beautiful sweater pattern by Bristol Ivy. I am knitting it in Woolmise Merino DK in the Moses colorway, which is a great, that's probably a pretty good, um, color. It is a deep dark blue that has just a hint of teal. Remember the sweater is fairly plain on the front and the detail um, and what gives it its hourglass shape is this really interesting back um, which is formed by yarn over um, sections and also um, sections of twisted rib. 
as you can see, um, progress that I've made since last time, I added a collar. And I have to say that I knit the collar a couple times to try and get the twisted rib in the collar to line up with the twisted rib on the back. Um, because as you know, if you pick up stitches um, that went one direction and go the other, it's kind of a half stitch off. And um, I did this a couple times before I was happy with it, but I am happy with it now. And um, last, last time I had the left sleeve done and now I have the right sleeve done. So um, if you remember my saying, um, I needed to do the sleeves and the collar. And then I decided that the sweater itself wasn't quite long enough for me. I did not quite make row gauge um, when I did this and I wanted this to be tunic length and um, to cover the assets on the behind. And um, it was not quite long enough to do that. And I wrestled with it for a little while and thought, oh, I'll just block it out. It'll be great. And then um, I went back to some of what I learned at the Yarn Harlots class and also um, kind of the, the you need to, you need to be honest with yourself as a knitter. And the truth is, even if I could block it out, such that I would be happy with how it fit um, every time I wore it and it didn't stay blocked, it was going to go back to being just a smidge too short. So I um, sucked it up because I have plenty of yarn and I took out the hem which had been bound off and I put all the stitches back on the needles and I am going to add a couple inches to the bottom. So um, we have a drive tomorrow morning, um, probably between five and six hours. Um, and so I hope to finish the body on this this weekend. And then all that's left will be weaving in a few ends. Um, it was mostly a seamless knit from the top down. I did have to pick up for the sleeves and for the collar. So there are eight or 10 or 12 ends to weave in, but really nothing serious. Um, these are also really um, large balls of yarn. Um, Woolnize Merino DK comes in, I believe it's 250 gram skeins. It might be 200 grams, I cannot remember, but it's like about 458, 478 yards per skein. So I did not have as many skeins as I would normally have, like if I were using Cascade 220 or something like that. Um, so I will need to weave in those ends and then this will be done. And, um, I believe this is 12 to 1400 yards when I get done, um, which means that will be quite an accomplishment for my stash dash total. Um, I'm already above a thousand yards. I finished, um, the socks. I finished, uh, the shawl um that I showed last week and then I finished the spin from last week so that's how I got to my first 1100 or so yards um and so this is another 1200 and then I have another spin I'll show you for today um so not too bad for week two of or um the the first full week of stash dash um I expect that other weeks will not be quite as <laughs> quite as um good on that although I hope to keep continuing um with the spinning so that again is my Hilda and I am hoping to finish that this weekend to take some photos next week and call it done. This sweater has taken me longer than sweaters normally do, mostly because I got distracted and um, knit a bunch of other things rather than finishing it up at the beginning. Um, so totally my fault, but I am eager to have it off the needles and to move on to other projects. One of the other projects that I showed you last week was my project for Camp Loopy. And it was a shrug, so I guess sort of another sweater, but more a summer-minded sweater. Um, and it was a uh, shrug designed by Dream and Color. It was called the Dream and Color Shrug by Kay, uh, I think it's Dahlquist. Let me check. Um, yeah, and this is um, a picture of what it looks like. It is a nice um, shrug with some ribbing on the sleeves and a simple lace pattern. Um, I was allowed to cast on for this starting on June 1st, which is when Campy Camp Loopy starts. And as I showed you, um, the color was a very Tiffany blue and oh, that is showing up just beautifully. And as you can see, um, Wednesday night was knit night and I did most of most of this there. And I got the ribbing for one side and then two pattern repeats, two full pattern repeats 
of the lace. And I am taking this one with me as well this weekend. Let me put it in front of me because that actually will show you the repeats better. There you go. Um, it is knit mostly sort of rectangularly and then um, you sew together some things and you do some extra ribbing, um, which you will see as I complete the garment. I don't want to give away too much because it is a paid for pattern. But I'm very, very pleased with my progress this week. I am alternating my two skeins um, every every other row, so um, or every two rows. Um, so I have two balls going at once, um, and this will be approximately a 500-yard project. That is two balls of Dreaming Color Classy, um, and the color is Rio Verde, which, like I said, I don't think it's particularly green. I think it's very turquoise. Um, now that I have the pattern figured out, um, it's basically memorizable um, because you can kind of watch as the, um, the lace zigzags back and forth. So once you sort of know what the pattern is, you can just follow it. So I am super pleased with my progress and should have more. Um, I expect that this knit will probably only take me maybe two weeks. So um, this should be a quick knit and um, I hope that it will be a nice thing to add to my summer wardrobe. I have quite a few dresses and actually I just ordered a couple more this week um, because I am enjoying wearing dresses and um, a little shrug for my shoulders um, and arms will be nice in the air conditioning. So that is my knitting progress. I also showed you some socks last week. I have not gotten to cast those on yet. Um, those will become my second project. Uh, once I finish Hilda, I am taking them with me this weekend in case I have time to cast on. Um, the yarn is wound, the pattern is printed, the needles are set. It is just a matter of casting on, but I have been working um, on Hilda at home in the evenings because I really, really want to get that one done and off the needles. Um, and then I will really only have um, this project, my cozy memories blanket, and whatever else I choose to cast on. Um, and I also want to get a couple small baby sweaters done this month. So I want to kind of rip through things um, and we'll see how that goes. So those are the two knitting projects on the needles right now with a third um, probably getting started this weekend and I will put some photos on Instagram. Let's go to the spinning. Like I said, this is going to be a short episode, but I do have a little bit to show you. Um, last week I showed you the, or I guess earlier this week on Monday, I showed you the second half of a braid that I had already started on Sunday. It was from a local to me dyer, the Topeka Twister, um, and there will be a link to her site in the show notes. It was a beautiful braid that had um, purples and pinks and browns and um, a few other colors, and it was, oh, yellow, um, and it was citrus blackberry tart, and I applied it this afternoon. So this is a pretty accurate color photo. It has pops of pink and purple and some peach where the yellow and the pink ran together and then a few splotches of bright yellow. Um, I will definitely take photos. Um, this has not been washed, so I really have no idea what it's going to look like when it's done. It was a merino silk, so it shouldn't puff up too much. Um, but I'm not going to make any comments on what exact weight and yardage will be because I really need to wait for it to wash and see how it dries. Um, by the time this podcast goes up on Sunday, this should be dry. If I get home and there's any natural light left, I will take photos and um, post them and get this one up in the shop. Otherwise, it will go up Monday morning. Um, and this has not been spoken for, so if um, pink and peachy and purple and some bright yellow um, float your boat, then this one might be for you. So that brings me to what I'm going to spin this week, and I actually decided to... Um, so it currently in... you know that I knit in the Harry Potter house cup. And current, the current um, section of Quidditch, the Quidditch match, um, the prompt for um, the time from May 31st to June 20th is endurance. And they want you to craft something that takes patience and skill and um, a lot of effort. And so I decided that I wanted to challenge myself um, on a spin. So I pulled out a braid that I have been hoarding in my stash for quite a few years. 
Um, I used to belong to the Bee Mice Elf, and I will put a link to that in the show notes, um, Fiber Club, which came out monthly. I believe now she has cut herself back to where she's only doing six clubs a year, or she may not even be doing clubs anymore. I know for a while she was doing a lot of co-op dyes, um, and she also now puts things up in her Etsy shop um, for that are ready to go. Um, she puts them up on Friday evenings. Anyway... Um, the big thing about Be Mice Elf was that she has, um, or at least she did have, particularly in clubs, um, and again, I'm talking probably 2011, 2012, 2013, I don't even remember. Um, I could look back and figure out when this braid was a club fiber. Um, but she had a very stylistic way of dyeing um, where she repeated stripes of color such that if you divided her braid lengthwise, and um, you were careful to divide it into halves or quarters or eighths, um, you could spin yourself some stripey sock yarn where the stripe sequence would repeat throughout the yarn. And um, you could create for yourself um, quite a nice pair of stripey socks. The other thing that she used to do is oftentimes the club braids were heavy, like 4.3 ounces or 4.5 ounces. So you could really stretch and get um, quite a bit of yardage out them if out of them if you were a great spinner. Um, or if you have small feet like I do and you're a good spinner, um, you could end up getting knee socks out of them. And I actually have a pair of knee socks that I knit out of um, a club braid that um, one of my friends was kind enough to spin up for me. We did a little fiber trade. She wanted some thick yarn spun up, so I spun her some thicker yarn. This was several years ago. Um, and she spun up quite a bit thinner yarn. So I decided that, that my challenge this week would be to take this beautiful braid of fiber. This is blues and purples and some bright kind of chartreusey greeny yellow. And I see that it is not going to um, show the colors very well. That's closer. I will have to put a photo up in my Instagram. Um, there's some teal, some gray. Um, this colorway was called Space Invaders. Um, and I love, love, love the colors. Um, anyway, I have been hoarding this braid <laughs> since I got it because I wanted to make a pair of stripey, sock stripey socks out of it. Um, and I wanted to wait until I was what I deemed good enough at spinning or that I could spin well enough that I could make myself some stripey sock yarn. So um, my plan for this week, because um, spinning super thin is a challenge for me. And um, I am also not much in the way of a um, N plier, Navajo ply, um, which is what it will take to create stripy socks. So basically I'm going to divide this braid probably down the center um, so that I have four equal pieces so that I have two repeats per sock. And then I'm going to spin it straight through um, straight through the stripey sequence, keeping them in order, and then I will be Navajo plying or chain plying each skein um, into sock yarn. So um, I'm hoping that this will only take me a week. It might take me a little bit longer than that. It is going to take a lot of concentration, um, a lot of patience, <laughs> and um, hopefully we'll work on some of the skills that I don't choose to work on very often because as you know, most often I spin kind of a... Uh, probably closest to a sport weight, and I do a two-ply barber pole. So this is definitely going to challenge me this week, and I think it will fit the prompt um, very nicely. And actually, that is not a bad approximation of the colorway right there. So that is what I will be spinning this week and working on. Um, the bobbin pictures may not be super um, pretty because usually the way I get really, really gorgeous bobbins is that I tear into tiny strips and do a mishmash of colors, whereas these will have thicker sections of colors. Um, but I will try and get some good pictures throughout the week so you can see my progress. So that brings me to the end of today's episode. Um, I will be working on knits this weekend, so I'm sure by Monday I will have more progress to show you. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend, or by the time you are seeing this, you have had a wonderful weekend. And um, next weekend we will get back on schedule where I won't be recording early or late, um, and I should have lots to show you because um, it means that given that I'm recording on Friday, um, I'll have a couple extra days between now and the next podcast. 
So I will say, as I always do, until I see you again, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye.